everyone, this is Hugo from Each Pound Studio and today we're going to be doing a review of Badger airbrushes and I said airbrushes because we're going to be looking at four airbrushes today. We're going to be looking at the Patriot 105, we're going to be looking at the uh, Badger 360, the Renegade Chrome from Badger and also the Soltar 2020. Soltar 2020. So basically we're going to be looking at all of those airbrushes. The first part is going to be on the Badger 3, uh, 105 and we're going to take it apart and then after that the other airbrushes we're just going to talk about the differences between all of them and the application where you can use them and why these airbrushes are better than other airbrushes or you know the differences in all of them. It's a review right? To maybe help you a little bit choose which would be the best airbrushes for, uh, airbrushes for you from the Badger range uh, between those four models because I don't have all the airbrushes from Badger. So basically that's pretty much it. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, in the description I'll have a link to a place where you can purchase those airbrushes and also a coupon discount that you can use. And also if you are interested in a particular model I'll write at what time in the video the, the, the segment for the particular model that you might be interested in will be. So here we go guys. First up is the Badger 105. Uh, the working horse I like to call that airbrush. Uh, from Badger. Uh, if you go on webairbrushes.com, uh, you're going to be able to find this airbrush for 123 US uh, dollars. And if you use the code Ichiban Painting, uh, it's going to give you 40 uh, additional percent over the purchase of this airbrush, which is going to get it right to $70 if I'm not mistaken. My maths are not too uh, messed up. So let's look at this puppy because it's an amazing airbrush. I mean, for the price, it's supposed to be, uh, you know, for the price, if we're looking at it price wise, it's going to be, uh, you know, entry level airbrush. But man, th this puppy is packing some serious, serious uh, quality into it. So basically, the first thing that I got when I picked up this airbrush that, that amazed me is the quality. Uh, it's an amazing quality airbrush, but not just only that, is that, <laughs> man, Ken. If you're watching this, you're a magician. Uh, this airbrush is the balance, okay? Um, maybe it's something that people will not talk about it when they're reviewing an airbrush. Uh, I've been using airbrushes for a long time. I've used many range. Uh, you know, not long ago, I was with another airbrush company and I thought their airbrushes was fantastic and it has been a long time since I ever tried Badger because I had a Badger before but it's a long time ago but by picking up this Badger right now and having you know another uh, airbrushes from other range of other companies to compare it with that's only when I actually notice how comfortable this uh, this one and the other airbrushes that we're gonna touch in from Badger are today is the balance this airbrush is really 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 well balanced when you hold it in your hand <coughs> the way it feels in your hand uh, with this balance is amazing and after that the second thing that I, I noticed with all the Badger airbrushes that I'm going to be reviewing today in this review is the the trigger smoothness is amazing uh, one important thing and for me it's really important and I really like that is that the trigger push the the, the play in the trigger push is really small which but at the same time has a really really nice feel to it which gives you the ability to can really well control and precisely control your airflow as well as when you, you're thinking about the trigger pull like this it's amazingly smooth there's not a lot of wobble into the trigger as you can see when you wobble it a little bit that everything moves compared to other airbrushes that I've tried in the past which will have a little uh, play in here which in terms uh, you know takes out a little bit of uh, the precision that you have with the airbrush so basically this was for me a big a major thing when I took the Badger 105 for an airbrush that is that cheap I was like wow I almost fell off my chair one thing is that I like is the, the, the needle tip, the way it is. Let's see if it's going to be focusing. Uh, come on, you can do it. You can do it. The needle tip is exposed. You can see your needle. There's still a needle protector there, but the needle is exposed, which is really easy for you to be able to clean. And we're going to wait for it to focus again. Focus. Okay, here we go. Really easy for you to be able to, uh, to check your needle, make sure you don't have dry tipping or the tip drying out on you and then you can actually pull uh, all the stuff out really clean the needle out really easily when you're actually working with the airbrush uh, taking apart this puppy is really easy you uh, unscrew the back part here you might not want to do that because there's the the bubble the the ball here on the needle but there's no problem it fits uh, out no problem then you want to unscrew this part here 
pull out your needle gently, set your needle apart where you're not going to actually step on it or bend it and um, then the back block comes out in one piece and this is one thing that I like the one piece back block uh, on airbrushes that I had in the past this one not like that uh, but this one comes in one piece a back block and then after that the trigger is a two-part trigger I used to be a little bit apprehensive with this system but uh, this one actually uh, really really impressed me because it's really easy to put back together and if you take out the needle uh, the nozzle guard then your nozzle is gonna, just gonna pop out like this so this is the take the, the breakdown of the Patriot and actually I'll just do the breakdown of this one the other airbrushes that we're gonna talk about I'm not gonna do the breakdown because it's exactly the same on all the model the only difference is that for example the chrome and the Soltar have a really small uh, nozzle this is the only difference so when you want to, a thing I want to mention here is the the nozzle. It doesn't use uh, a seal, okay, an O-ring or a seal type of thing. It's just pressure fitted in the cup here, uh, not in the cup, but in the the part here, which means that if you're using aggressive solvent to clean your airbrush, like I I like to use the Tamiya airbrush cleaner, uh, which is aggressive. Uh, it has a tendency to eat eat up the seals, and it doesn't do that with uh, this one because it doesn't use seals so when you want to put it back together you pop in your airbrush uh, your airbrush nozzle here and then after that you just unscrew uh, re-screw the front part tightly until it rests on the seal that you have here and that's pretty much it for uh, the back assembly really simple what you want to do is that you want to put the back block back in first so you put in the back block first screw it in all the way then once the back block is is apart, make sure the checking nut is up. You can you want to swivel this one until it finds its slots and it becomes uh, available to be moving again. Then what you want to do is you want to pull that thing up, keep it under tension, and then you see there's a slot here. That's where this little thing is going to fit in. Before some airbrushes with that kind of design they didn't have that, and it was really a pain in the butt to put that back in. But with this slot here, it's really easy. You want the arc to face backwards and then you just, oh, I'll try to do it you just slide it in back in like this make sure it stay there, you still need to be a little bit careful but you know it's it's not that easy and then you put, uh, not that difficult, then you put back your trigger and then you let go of the back thing here and then just make sure everything is really well screwed back in like so and then make sure your trigger is at the right spot and then when everything is secure you have your working airbrush um, then you want to put back your, your chuckle nut just a little bit then you want to take your needle depress the trigger just to make sure the trigger is sitting properly on the valve where it's supposed to sit and after that you want to just push your needle carefully all the way back in once it's all the way back in you just want to screw back the chuckle nut make sure everything is secured moving and then you want to put back the back block at uh, the back section of the airbrush and it's done one little thing before we switch in into the other airbrushes um, one thing that I was amazed with is that an airbrush of this quality for this price is, is an amazing an amazing feat and it comes in with a trigger adjustment here so uh, this is this little uh, screw nut here that you have if you unscrew it is going to reduce the tension on the spring in the back block which means that your trigger is going to be smoother and if you screw it back in it's going to make your, your uh, more tension on the spring which means your, your trigger is going to be a little bit more tight so for for having this option on an airbrush that is that cheap uh, <laughs> it's an amazing thing uh, right off the box it's already smooth enough but being able to adjust your own trigger it's an amazing stuff um, so basically the other one we're gonna look at is almost like the the Patriot uh, the, the Patriot 105 I mean in the design uh, this part from here to there is the same airbrush exactly the only difference is that when you buy this one it comes with a bigger needle and bigger nozzle but the main the major difference with the 360 is that the 360 you can actually flip the cup around okay and then when you look here you can take this little thing here and plug it in boom like so and then you become uh, you have a super grav a siphon feed airbrush um, so you can switch this airbrush between a siphon feed and a gravity feed airbrush 
you know within seconds and it's the same uh, front part but like I said this one uses a bigger needle but you can still use uh, smaller needles and uh, smaller nozzle sets from Badger to transform this airbrush to a more precise airbrush if you want so if you're looking for something that's a little bit more versatile and then the 360 will be an airbrush uh, that you will love let me see uh, how much is the 360 not 100 percent sure I, I don't have it in the list of prices that I can see right now but I think it's about two hundred dollars two hundred and thirty dollars or something it's a little bit more expensive but you still get the same quality that you get with the 105 with the versatility of being able to transform this into a siphon feed airbrush so if you're doing a lot of army base coating and things like that if you're a commissioned painter and you, you're doing a lot of batch work then the 360 will actually be awesome for that because it's going to give you the ability to be able to base coat everything uh, uh, with a, a cup of paint like like so instead of always having to refill your cup it's going to give you that ability so these are the two airbrushes that are a little bit in the lower end of the spectrum if you would say now we're going to move in into something that's a little bit higher end which is the Badger uh, Chrome so it's in the Renegade Siri and this is the Renegade Chrome uh, this airbrush is an amazing bad boy uh, the Renegade Chrome was actually designed for modelers so a little bit of the differences between the Renegade Chrome and uh, the, the, the 105 series if you want is that the Renegade at the tip here it has two prones or a crown type protector so you know if you drop your airbrush it's going to protect more your needle but the needle is completely exposed so you can still see it when you're working on it uh, the chrome has this little piece of plastic here where your hand uh, when your hand are resting when you're airbrushing it so it gives you a better grip and a better control uh, when you're holding the airbrush another difference is that the chrome has compared to the other ones is that the chrome has a stopper here that you can screw which is actually this little part here that when you screw it is going to actually block your needle so you can set a, a spray pattern that you like uh, if you want to have always the same paint consistency instead of your air uh, you know uh, instead of having to remember that you want this consistency you can actually block it there by turning this knob it's going to block it and then your your trigger is going to stay here the max is going to go is here if you want it it to be freely moving to the maximum of what it can then you just unscrew it and then it's going to give you a full um, mo um, full momentum of the needle if I can say um, the chrome is an amazing uh, tool I mean it's it does it's such a cool airbrush it's amazing I was really really impressed with the chrome and um, no wonder why this airbrush is almost sold out everywhere you look for one uh, it's because of <laughs> its amazing performance and its amazing quality of build the chrome uh, retails for about hundred and eighty dollars hundred and ninety dollars but again if you go to webairbrushes.com you're going to be able to find this airbrush for $190 minus 40% and at webairbrushes.com they have it in stock so you're going to be able to order it if you've been uh, looking for one and you couldn't find one you're going to be able to order this one an amazing tool and still again the balance is really really well thought out it really fits nicely in the hand it's a little bit long but I mean it's a long airbrush compared to the the, the next one in the line uh, which is the Soltar which is way smaller in terms of the back part but it, it goes to everybody's uh, taste and the last one the Soltar I mean for precision uh, precision airbrushing and uh, detailing the Soltar is amazing uh, I mean me personally from from trying it, it, it out them all out uh, right now I'm leaning a lot on uh, I'm leaning a lot on uh, the Patriot to do some some batch work because it has a bigger needle than the one I have in my chrome but actually I have some different le needles for my chrome so I might switch them out to check it out but for for base coating uh, I, I found myself right now using a combination of the Badger 105 for base coating and then after that for all the detailing work like I was doing some skin on this uh, miniature from my range uh, for my live show the other day and all the detailing work I was doing it with the Soltar so the Soltar is uh, smaller lighter and it fits really well in the hand and still again an amazing uh, trigger 
uh, like all the Badgers, I mean, seriously, Ken, how 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 can you how do you do that? Ken is the owner of Badger, by the way. Uh, how do you make your airbrush so smooth? I want your recipe. Uh, it's an ama it's amazing. Uh, it's fantastic trigger, and trigger is really important. The comfort and that little plastic piece here makes it really comfortable in your hand, and and the trigger makes it really easy to control. And then after that, the Soltar also has. Uh, here a back adjustment a little bit like the chrome where you can adjust your um, your flow of paint and block it to a certain uh, level to make sure that you always have the same line pattern so basically that's pretty much it for today's and like I said the Soltar the chrome they all use the same kind of uh, let's let's zoom out a little bit zoom out I said uh, the Soltar the chrome they all use the same uh, the Patriot and the, the the 360, they all use the same kind of uh, of mechanism for for uh, taking them apart. They all use the same principle. They all have the little slot in them to put back the to put back the except the chrome. Oh, the chrome doesn't have it. That little slot to put back the the little back piece of the trigger. But they are all. I mean, there's not a lot of things that you can say except they are amazing. I mean, they are amazing airbrushes. So if you're looking for a good airbrush, Badger will suit your needs uh, and exceeds your needs uh, very, very, very easily. And you have airbrushes in different ranges of price. The Soltar is a little bit. I didn't. Sorry, I forgot to tell you the price of the Soltar. It's still. It's also available on WebAirbrushes.com. But the Soltar. Let me check just to make sure. I know it's not bad bad video making but I just forgot and I've been trying to do this model uh, this uh, actually this uh, review for a couple of times but I had problems the Soltar 2020 is a little bit more expensive than the Chrome it's really um, their their highest and most expensive model but um, it's uh, yeah it's four hundred dollars but if you look at it uh, with the discount code you get 40% off of the Soltar so this one is would be the most expensive then second in line would be uh, the 360 I think it's more expensive than the Chrome than the Chrome and then the Badger the Patriot 105 but basically the, the Badger 360 is a little bit more expensive because it's like two airbrush in one so basically if you want an airbrush go check out Badger's website you're gonna have more information on all, all of those airbrushes and then go see webairbrushes.com and you can use the coupon each bond studio there to get 40% off on your purchase and you're gonna be able to gear up yourself with one of these bad boys there and uh, really enjoy uh, a really nice quality uh, piece one little thing before I close in um, is that I have other airbrushes to compare them with. I'm not just doing this this review right now because you know I'm sponsored by Badger now and everything. I, I do have other airbrushes from other company. I have you know my Infinity and my my Evolution from from um, uh, from Harder and Steinbach. Really, really thing that I want to say is that yes, the Infinity and the Evolution are really two sexy pieces of kit. They're beautiful airbrushes, but by comparing both of them, I have all of them right now, a whole of the Badgers and I have the 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 Harder and Steinbeck and I can't I can't find no points uh where the the the, the Harder and Steinbeck are more performant than the 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 Badger. The Badger surpass Harder and Steinbeck in every every single point. The only point where the inf uh, the not the Infinity but the Harder and Steinbeck will go in and and surpass Badger is in the look they are better looking airbrushes but I mean seriously why do you buy an airbrush do you buy it for it to look cool on your desk or you buy an airbrush for it to be you know a, a machine that you're gonna work tool that you're gonna work it with and it's gonna give you the the quality and the opportunity to being a, a better at airbrushing Badger will do that for you so basically that's pretty much it I'm sorry if it's a long video but I really wanted to cover all of those airbrushes this was Hugo from Ichiban Studio. If you do have a question about those airbrushes or airbrushes in general, drop it in the comment section and I will answer it to the best of my abilities. And I will see you guys in the next video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. That helps me a lot. Cheers.